Hello, my name is Yu Wei Chao. I'm a PhD student in the Computer Science Department at the University of Michigan. And today, I'm going to be telling you how we teach machines to see. You probably have seen this before. This is a typical face detection system on your camera. And how about this? This is an app that tags the age of each person in the picture. And people make fun of this because this is usually not very accurate. So these technologies are developed from a research field called computer vision, which is a branch of a broader field called artificial intelligence. The goal of computer vision is to make computer able to perceive the visual world just like we human. So typically, what we do is to give our computer a picture like this, and we ask it to tell us something about the picture. In this case, we want it to tell us that this is a downtown street view and also all different objects in the scene. Well, this seems to be super easy for you, but this turns out to be super hard for the computers, and let me tell you why. Let's start with a very simple task. Just name the object you see in the picture. So that is a cat, that's a dog, that's a chair. Easy enough. But this is not the case for the computers. In the computer world, each picture is essentially a two-dimensional array of digital numbers. Each of these numbers represents the color value you see in a small area of the picture, called pixels. So in order to be like the human, the computer has to take this entire array of digital numbers and figure it out, oh, this is a cat. So you see the problem. Seeing is not the same as understanding. Our eyes take the picture for us, but, th but it really is the mechanism in our brain that makes us understand what we see. As a computer vision scientist, we work on helping computers to see. We build computer programs that take the array of numbers and hopefully output the name cat. So how can we do this? The first step might be, okay, I know the cat has a round face, two triangular ears, two eyes, and a body below. And they, they are mostly yellow, just like this one. So let's just try to look for shapes like this and probably some specific colors from the pixels. And we use this as our cat model. Now, your computer sees some new pictures of cat. Well, the cat looks different, but not that different. So maybe it can tell you that's a cat from the model you have now. But how about these pictures? They are all cats, but have different shapes and colors. Well, this is indeed a trouble, but let's just create another three models for cats. Well, how about these? They are also cats. So you see the problem. There is an incredibly large variability of the pictures of cats. This is caused by the different poses, different viewpoints, and different breeds. And this is just for cats. There are still many other objects to be identified by our computer. And that really makes a, gives a hard time to the computer vision scientist. So now let's step back a little bit and think about, as a human, how do we learn to recognize cats? As a young child, you might be taught by your parents that this is a cat when you see one or you might ta be taught by your teacher in the school what a cat should look like given a picture. So by the time you are a five-year-old children, you might have seen a lot of examples of cats already. So now when you see a new instance of like this, although you have never seen this particular cat before, you can tell that this is a cat, since this is because you learn what a cat should look like from those you have seen before. So this is one way of how we learn. We learn from examples. And the question is, can we do something similar to make our computers able to identify cats? First, we want to have a bunch of examples for cats. And we call this the training sets for cats. We feed these pictures to our computer and try to let it figure out what a picture of a cat should look like. And by the time it sees a new picture of a cat, 
although it has never seen it before, it can scratch its head and say, oh, this is a cat, since I've seen one similar to this one before. So you see this, learning examples are important, and more examples you can get, the better you will learn. You better want your training set to include all different viewpoints, different poses, and different breeds of the cat, just like these images. Now the computer vision scientists are happy because he does not have to struggle about the variability that a cat picture can have. Instead, his job now is to take his camera and go out and get some pictures for cats. We want to get as many pictures as possible. So how about let's just go get a thousand cat pictures. It took some time, but he finally get it done. Now, the next question is, how about dogs? You don't want your computer to just be able to identify cats. So now we need another a thousand pictures for dogs. But how about things other than animals, like vehicles or furnitures? Well, you probably had to spend five years as a photographer for your PhD in computer vision. The good news is there is an enormous amount of images on the web and you can get them easily. For example, you can go to Google and type cat and you'll get a bunch of cat images. Now we have an easier way to build our training set. In fact, researchers have done this already. There's a research project at Stanford called ImageNet, which is a large image database composed of 14 million images for 21K object categories. So now computer vision scientists become teachers. We train our computer using a large amount of examples we have. Everything seems good. Now there's only one missing piece. You might wonder, how exactly does the computer learn? How does it figure out what, it, what is the important thing to care about in identifying cats? Again, computer vision scientists take inspiration from how human learns, which is handled by the power of our brain. Our brain is composed of massive amount of neurons which connects to one another. These connections allow one neuron to pass signals to other neurons. When a human sees something, the visual signal is passed from our eye to the brain and trigger neuron activities. As the output, our brain gets to know that we are seeing a cat. With this inspiration, scientists design a model called neural networks. A neural net is a network consists of many neurons like human brains. These neurons are connected to each other and groups, groups of neurons are stacked one layer after another. This is one neuron in the neural network. It connects to a bunch of neurons before it and a bunch of neurons after it. The neuron can receive signals from those before it. And based on these inputs, the neuron can decide whether it wants to pass the signal to the, to the next one. If it, if it decide to pass the signal, then we say the neuron activate. Otherwise, it does not activate. So how is this used for identifying cats? The cat image is passed in from the left of the neural network. The signal will then be propagated from the left to the right of the network. And the right neuron will be activated at the end and tells you that this is a cat. A common neural network today has millions of neurons and tens of millions of parameters that controls the neural activation. And these neural networks are trained with massive amount of training data. The training will decide how neurons should activate. With this amount of effort, computers are now getting better at naming objects, but still not as good as humans yet. But at least computer vision scientist is happy again. Back to where we start, we talked about naming objects. But computer vision is not just about naming objects. My research field in particular is helping computers able to understand what humans are doing in the pictures. For example, you can tell that a kid is riding a bicycle here, a man is eating a hot dog, and a lady is talking on the cell phone. 
This has many potential applications, for example, using computers to help us detect emergencies. Or robot applications. Image, imagine one day robots will help humans with many daily tasks. If you want to get along with your robot, you probably want to make sure it understands what you are doing first. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.